Well, hello, friends. Welcome one and welcome all. I can't offer much in this outdoor hall, but sit here and rest. You must be weary, and I'll share with you Tales of Tyria. <laughs> This week on Tales of Tyria, 100% more bird. And what do you do when you don't have anything to talk about? Find out this week. Stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Tyria right here. Talesofteria.com is where you can find us. That's the website. We've got all the show notes and all of the links and things that we talk about here on the show. Tales of Tyria itself, of course, is your weekly source for Guild Wars 2 discussion, news, and strategy, talking, and news, and more. That's great stuff. What? And all sorts of great stuff. All sorts of great stuff, yeah. exactly. That is Freelancer. Welcome, sir. How's it going? Kai is also here with us. Kai, welcome. Hey. And Edwin has been joining us today. Welcome. Hey, Bridger. Hello, hello. So, I am Bridger. We will be talking about, well, we got a little bit of Guild Wars 2 stuff to talk about, but it's been a very dry week and we've covered basically everything and there were some things that I was thinking we could talk about again and it just it didn't seem like good entertainment value so what we're going to do is first go into a bit of news there was a great interview this week along with some other links that we want to talk about and there was a blog post so before we get into all of that first let's continue what we started two weeks ago when we, we asked Vega to sort of reintroduce himself to the audience because there's probably some people that may not have seen the old episodes and you know what? Don't go see them because they're terrible. They're old. <laughs> they've got white backgrounds. They don't have flashy green screens. See, I'm here on the battlefield now, so that's cool. Um, comes with the parrot, actually. The cockatiel. So, here's the deal. Freelancer is going to be introducing himself to you this week. So, Freelancer, tell us about yourself. Just give us the sort of rundown. Uh, you know, what are you doing uh, in Guild Wars 2? Uh, you're the leader of Team Legacy. Is that how you'd want to portray yourself? Uh, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I run uh, TeamLegacy.net um, with the help of a very awesome staff. Um, I also run the guild Team Legacy, which is a guild sort of form behind that community. Um, it's completely focused around PvP, uh, more specifically covering the privatized tournament scene. So uh, when it comes to prize pool tournaments, uh, structured PvP, all that fun stuff, that is what we are focusing on. Um, besides that, uh, not too much else. I mean, Guild Wars 2, I'm just as excited as anybody else, if not more so, I dare say. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. All right, so let's see. You play, uh, what's, your, what's your main class? Uh, my main class would probably be Mesmer, definitely. All right. and Some, Something about playing mind games with uh, enemy players just All right. appeals to me. Edwin's over there clanking away. Do you have a mechanical keyboard, Edward? That was Kai. Oh, that was Kai? <laughs> that was <not> me. <laughs> Kai is the guilty one. I was actually just typing to my friend saying, that isn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who to believe now. Everybody point your cameras at your keyboards for the rest of the show. I need to know who's telling the truth. All right. Anyway, uh, Freelancer, if you were to play another class besides uh, Mesmer, what's your backup? Oh, backup's definitely a thief. Um, I'm a sucker for class cannon builds. I mean, my whole philosophy is I don't really care how many stuns, CCs, you know, <laughs> whatever you have. If you're dead before you even realize you're under attack, I mean, that's a win for me. So... Um, those two classes definitely have the highest burst from what I could tell, and um, that's, why I, that's why I chose them. Awesome. All right, so now we are going to enter you into something we like to call the gauntlet. Are you ready, sir? Yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> All right. Cue the music. All right, remember, all of these questions are Guild Wars 2 related. 
so <laughs> New York is not the answer we're looking for. <laughs> Freelancer, what is your favorite city? Favorite city, Lions are cheesy. All right, favorite race? Favorite race would be this, sir. Favorite class? Uh, Mesmer. PvP or World versus World? Uh, structure PvP? Yeah, structure PvP or World versus World. Structure PvP, definitely. Crafting or exploring? Uh, exploring. Can't stand crafting. <laughs> Immersion or <laughs> competition? Like they do that for me. See <laughs> 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 no, behind the curtain here, ladies and gentlemen. Immersion or competition? Uh, competition. If I wanted immersion, I'd just read a book. Ooh! All right. Trebuchet, trebuchet. Everybody yells at me for calling that wrong. Trebuchet or Siege Gollum? Uh, trebuchet, by far. Nifahel or Kylo? Kylo. Keyboard or gaming keypad? Uh, keyboard. Can't take a keypad to a tournament. All right. Finally, fill in the blank. Blank really breaks my immersion. Bridger, I think you break my immersion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Right no, in the uh, feelings. Ugh. I'll tell you what breaks my immersion in PvP. The little cutesy characters like gnomes and Asura running around <laughs> with the big old beady eyes and like the little squeaky voices. That's what breaks my immersion. I right can there. see that. I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. That is uh, your introduction to Freelancer, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it, thank you. All right. So... Let's see. Any more show updates here? Uh, I don't think so. Don't forget to send us feedback. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com. Like I said, I mean, I've kind of been getting out of ideas. So this is the point where if you have something that you want to discuss on the show, Guild Wars 2 related, of course, um, then be, feel free, please feel free to send it to us. Feedback at TalesOfTeria.com. Uh, you know, just... I, I want us to talk about why the Asura are blue. I don't know. Anything. Anything you got on your mind, please send it to us. I need ideas. We need something for the feedback uh, section next week. So, let's get right into the news this week. Uh, Freelancer had a bit of an announcement this week, uh, and, and this is one of the kinds of links that would pop up on my radar, except I was kind of in helpful in hel helping put it together uh, this weekend, actually. So, Freelancer, why don't you tell us about the Team Legacy Video Library? Uh, absolutely. So we kicked off a video library centered around PvP, um, and it's it's unique in the respect that it is number one focused on PvP. It's moderated it's and all, all Guild Wars two PvP. related too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and um, and so we have all of these great videos out there. It's just when you go to YouTube or you go to forums, you know, and you want to, you know, you don't want to read all the text and all the forum threads and stuff. I just want to look at Mesmer PvP videos. Well. We couldn't find anything like that. I mean, we had our own forums, and you'd still have to wade through all the threads. So what this little thingy that we set up does via a lot of back-end coding is it pulls all of the videos from the forums that are posted, any YouTube video, Twitch, et cetera, and list it all per category. So you can go to this video library and say, click Mesmer, Mesmer videos and pull up every Mesmer video that's ever been linked in the forum ever. And uh, it's really awesome. So it allows you to you know, look at exactly what you want to look at without all the extra nonsense that you would find on YouTube. And then we are also, if we click on one of these, we're taken to actually a uh, place to view it, obviously, um, and also the ability to comment as well. Absolutely. So not only do you watch the videos, but you can say that, Bridger, you were horrible in this video. I'm giving you two stars, you know, or oh. Kai, you were friggin' awesome. This Guardian yeah. play was amazing, Man. you know, and uh, you can comment and say that. So. Uh, it also attaches itself to a forum thread, which is really nice. So you don't actually have to look at this. You can just browse the forums, too. And you're commenting on the same video, and it shows up in both places. So it's really neat. Um, you know, it's just it's a more relaxed way, but more specific way to look at PvP videos. And can anybody, like, let's say uh, Joe Schmo finds a really cool warrior video, can he come to the Team Legacy website and, and throw it on there and say, hey, check this out? Uh, yeah. Now, if he doesn't have, I think it's like five posts or something to prevent spam, uh, it'll have to be approved, but he can submit a video, definitely. Okay, that's cool. And now, so how do we find this? How do we get to this for the people that are listening? Uh, that's teamlegacy.net forward slash video library, or you can just go to teamlegacy.net and click the tab. Awesome. And so, theoretically, is there going to be uh, improvements on this in the future? Is there anything else oh, you're planning to feedback came up like uh, a lot of people might immediately say well 
I, you know, if I'm looking at the Mesmer category, I don't want to look at Mesmer videos that are from pre-beta, you know, when they completely nerf ah. Mesmers. Um, cause we all know Mesmers are going to be nerfed. They're so awesome. So, um, you know, if you don't want to look at that, you can actually sort it by date. We're, we're setting all that up. It's a lot of coding on my part. It's a lot of coding from a buddy of mine that's helping me and, uh, we're getting that going. Uh, we're also having it doing some fetching scripts so it can pull videos from other sources as well. We just want to have the ultimate source even better than YouTube. So if you go to the category you want to look at, Mesmer, World v. World, what, what have you, you can see exactly that and it's sorted by rating so you're not looking at a bunch of nonsense you don't feel like looking at. Awesome. Awesome. All right. I will uh, definitely try to keep posting more stuff to there. I already posted a couple of them. The Heroes of Tyria trailer, the the, the, the dubstep, the wub, 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 wub. <laughs> That's, oh, I love that. Every time I see it linked somewhere, I have to watch it all the way through. It's ridiculous. And I saw nobody else posted it, so I definitely posted that up there. I posted all the Tales of Tyria's ones up there. Now, these are actually like basically linked off of YouTube and uh, any other sites besides YouTube that they can pull from. Uh, we can manually add from other sites. It's one of those things we have to show respect to Guru and these other big... Uh, I mean, any other collect. video sites. Like, uh, it, it can do Twitch, can it? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's 13 different video formats it can accept. So okay. Twitch, YouTube, all sorts of different types. Cool, cool. Okay, excellent. So definitely check that out, guys. Uh, we're hoping that it turns into a very big thing in the Guild Wars 2 community, so... I'll tell you what, Bridger, we kicked it off, what was it, about three or four days ago, right? We mm -hmm. finally, finally published it. Started with three videos, just to test it out. There are now 728 YouTube videos on there. Um, oh. There are 100, and that's not it, there's 120 Twitch videos from different big streamers. Uh, a lot of the big big ones you guys saw on Reddit, we pulled all those, even if it was Twitch, and um, it's, it's just exploded. And, and so it's really great for someone like me, you know, or any other PVP or because you can just browse through all the great ones and you can rate it so that people don't waste their time looking for the good ones. Yeah, it sounds perfect for somebody who's unemployed and really wants to play Guild Wars <laughs> 2, but can't yeah. yet. You got hours and hours and hours <laughs> just sitting here. Well, so. you know, the best way they say it is the train, you know, in PVP, whether you're doing World v. World or a structured PVP, that by far what you should be doing right now is watching videos. The guy doesn't have to be necessarily better than you, but I mean, what else are you doing right now? If, if that's your aspiration, you know, you need to be out there watching videos. Exactly. So this just makes it easier. I actually watched uh, so an Elementalist video uh, this weekend and saw somebody using Ride the Lightning in a way that I hadn't thought about using it before. If you jump up and use it, it'll, you'll just launch yourself forward for a while. So you can actually use it to get over like chasms in world versus world or uh or maybe just from one high vantage point in kylo to a rooftop or something like that almost use it like a war like a warrior's leap skill so you know yeah. exactly like you said you learn something every new every time you're uh, you're watching these videos i really just want to get in the game and learn that way but <laughs> we'll we'll have to suffice uh, settle for this right here so Let's move on to the next thing. Here is an interview with Mike O'Brien, which is the ArenaNet president. And the interview is entitled, ArenaNet president discusses careful monetization of Guild Wars 2, the least greedy Western MMO. That's an interesting title, the least Pretty greedy Western there. MMO. Yeah, I know, right? It's a big, a big statement. And apparently, loading that article has frozen... Google Chrome. So we're just gonna <laughs> fix yeah. that right now. At least greedy is is an interesting topic for that. I mean, what do you define as a greedy MMO? That's a good greedy. question. I think they'd simply mean uh, with a subscription fee. But I don't think that's greedy. That's though. not I mean, greedy. No. You gotta pay for the servers and stuff, right? Right. So what makes greedy a company would be like greedy? Pay. You have to pay for everything, and I think. I mean, you know, Guild Wars 2 is pretty up there with having to pay for certain services like bigger bank accounts, character slots, server transfers. So I think the least greedy is a little bit, like, misleading. Well, it all kind of depends because if it turns out, like some people suggest, that, for example, World, World of Warcraft doesn't cost as much to run as people think it does. Like, of that $15 a month, like a dollar and a half per player goes to the server infrastructure that everybody thinks that money is for, and the rest is just kind of like, oh, and then maybe, I don't know, what, $3 you know, per player goes to the, to the actual updating and paying the programmers and done, doing this. So somebody, I think, broke it down in a couple of different things. I was searching around for stuff like this for a while, and you know, there are some people that suggest that, oh, well, Blizzard just keeps a ton of that. It's got a huge profit margin on that $15. And...
$15. So therefore, it should be lower unless you're greedy, which is not exactly how market economic works. I remember. Um, so my understanding about how market economics works is if, for example, that is a massive profit margin, let's say for the sake of argument that Blizzard only needs $4 per player to cover all of their costs related to running the game and updating it, you know, not including making the expansion packs because they pay for themselves. Uh, let's say that they make $10 off of every player a month and they don't need to. Well, what that winds up doing essentially is providing an incentive to other companies to get into the same market and essentially provide other companies look at that and say wow they're very profitable i think we'll get into that and we'll make stuff and we can compete with them that's how it's supposed to work in a commodity market if somebody's selling pears and they're selling them way higher than they should because there's plenty of supply but they're the only person selling it somebody else goes, that's a profitable thing it makes sense to start up a competing pair selling business or distribution business i don't know so it's way more complicated than it first sounds i guess is what i'm trying to say yeah i think uh you know not having read that article yet um i think it just comes down to i, I can understand because a lot of the stuff they're they're having you buy i mean besides the game uh, is optional, right? I mean, you don't need to buy anything to get ahead. I, I guess the greedy companies that they are comparing that to would be the ones that give you oh, like pay you to know, win ones. It pay to win ones, exactly. Yeah. You know, where it's almost like if you don't give us more money, you're going to fail in this game, where you're going to you know be way behind, and it'll punish you for not giving them money. Whereas in Guild Wars Two, the cash shop is more. You know, we would appreciate it if you give us money, and if you do here's some little toys for you, you know, and little things that might help you along. But oh, yeah. you're certainly not going to be behind, you know, if you don't. I remember seeing somebody post on the Guru forums half a year or something back, like a long time ago, and it was uh, NCSoft's quarterly earnings report for, I think, quarter two, 2011. Mm -hmm. And the server maintenance and upgrade costs were so low compared to, you know, fees for personnel, marketing, um, everything else it was like a footnote of like there was like 10 things that were listed and like server costs were a footnote yeah for every, all servers for their games for their websites so it's really not that much money i think that's kind of why they can get away with not charging a subscription fee because you know the game itself they had like a million people sign up to beta and god knows how many people pre-purchased the game so i think the game itself and the microtransactions kind of cover the cost of the servers and you know paying staff but i mean something like a subscription fee would just give them that profit to kind of give extra people would think the blizzard would kind of give that little bit extra to make the game better all right so i want to take a couple of quotes out of this article and talk about them for a minute uh, O'Brien says, this is the, Mike O'Brien, the president of ArenaNet, says, quote, So the microtransactions we offer are non-essential additions to the game and convenience services for players who trade money for time. Then he again, he says later, he kind of uh, uh, clarifies that. He says, quote, I think that a super fan of Guild Wars 2 who is short on cash should still have the ability to collect microtransaction items like town clothes and mini pets. And I think a Guild Wars 2 player who comes home late from work every night and can't spend as much time playing as his friend uh, do, uh, as his friends do, should also have the ability to collect those really unique in-game items. Letting players trade with each other empowers them to use whatever they have to make up for whatever they don't have. Unquote. Now, the question I have for you, panel, what happens if you don't have money or time? You're screwed. You, <laughs> you shouldn't be playing, be playing MMOs. MMOs. <laughs> <laughs> Expensive that's where, like, I guess. that's where, like, Facebook games come into play and stuff. There you go. I don't know. Oh, People spend a lot of time on Farmville. <laughs> <laughs> the, the appointment simulator, as someone called it once. Um, I like that. I mean, it gives people the opportunity if you have a big guild for example you know i'm just going to use a random example freelancer say you know his job requires him to be at work a lot he can say guys you know if you get this gear whatever i will pay for it using this or whatever and i think it's a good opportunity to be able to you know buy the gems trade them for gold and then actually like get items that you want off the auction house and things like that um it's not necessarily like pay to win because you're not directly using money to actually buy things but you know it does give you the opportunity to make up for lost time by having gold and things like that okay so let's see he has another couple of quotes in here um o'brien says quote 
I'll give a direct comparison. Guild Wars 2 is both a great MMO and a great RPG, so anyone who plays offline RPGs like Skyrim or online RPGs like Diablo 3 is going to love Guild Wars 2. Those games cost $60. Compared to them, Guild Wars 2 has at least as much content, world exploration, personal storylines, and replayability. And then, for no additional charge, Guild Wars 2 gives you a fully persistent world, etc., etc. Um, so I think what he, unquote, sorry, I think what he's trying to say here is basically Guild Wars 2 has this Skyrim-style personal story, and it has all the persistent stuff you want from an MMO, both of which you'd normally pay $60 for, but you're only paying, uh, you know, sixty dollars for once one thing here um i don't know do you do you buy into that line of reasoning guys not really i mean i don't know like i i guess i i played the swotor beta for example like when it first came out and i really enjoyed the story and i didn't think that i was like oh i'm getting two for the price of one but i don't think that when i'm playing guild wars 2 either i just think you know it's one game that's how they designed it so i don't think they should kind of be like well guys you know you're getting two for the price of one i just think it's a game you know, you make it how it is and you pay for it. People I know. Uh, go ahead. I was going to say, um, you know, I, like, I love the lore. Like, if you go back to episode, I think, 14 is the great lore show that mm -hmm. I was originally on. Um, but, you know, I love the lore. I love to read it. I have the books. Um, but at the same time, you can only get so far with the lore in game. And then afterwards, you have to enjoy actually playing the game. And I think that's where a lot of people say Swotor fell short was that after the story's over and you learn the story, there wasn't much replay value. Um, as I understand it. So yeah, for, for me, it's, it's along the lines of, of the wow factor of like, you know, am I going to get off the computer and just have these great memories and these awesome, you know, feelings from the game? I'll give you an example. Like, um, have you, have you guys ever played like Bastion? Yeah. Bastion? Yeah, Bastion. Okay. That was a game that costed what? Like $10, right? Yeah. $15 10 or 15. It was pretty you cheap. Know, yeah, exactly. But that was a game that I felt like I could have paid, you know, forty dollars for it, and it would have been just fine. And that's kind of how I feel towards the the amount of time put into MMOs. I mean, a anybody can write an MMO to basically waste one hundred twenty hours of your life. We've seen a, a thousand Korean MMOs do the same thing. But what MMO out there is going to not only just bring you into the game and have you play sixty hours, eighty hours, or being a persistent world, 200, 400 hours. But is it going to create those memories? Is it going to be one of those things that we all talk about like we did with uh, previous games, like the original StarCraft Brood War? I mean, the storyline of that or, or the original storyline of Warcraft 3. I mean, are we going to be talking about this, you know, after we're done with the game or after we sign off a year from now? If it does that, I don't really think it matters what the cost of the game is, $60 or whatever. Because at that point, it's like you're buying art. You know, you're buying something that is, it's a sentimental value at that point. Mm -hmm. So much like somebody that really likes the, the Mona Lisa will pay, you know, nearly three quarters of a you know, billion dollars for it, it, it's just a painting at that point. You could argue that. But at that point, it's, it's much more than that to the person that's playing it or, or in that case, buying it. So that's just the way I see it. Yeah, you know I, I, I agree ahead. with that. No, I was going to say, I agree. I mean, things in MMOs, if you're investing time into it, you have to enjoy it. And it's something like memories of your guild, experiences you have. And as freelancer said, years down the line, you're like, oh my God, do you remember when we raided this? Or, you know, that, I mean, you guys, that, you know, that battle that you were talking about in PvP. The, the Dreaming battle of Bay Dreaming battle. Bay. Yeah, exactly. You guys already have that amazing memory and, you know, you really value that already. And that was just in beta. So I think, yeah, that, that kind of memory is priceless. You know, it kind of strikes me as the difference between for example, Half-Life and Left 4 Dead. In Half-Life, like in the personal story of Guild Wars 2 or in uh, you know, many other sort of linear games, the story is written and you experience the story as it's told, right? It's in Half-Life, you go through the story, you don't make any choices. Even in some cases like Mass Effect 3 or 2, you do make choices and they impact the story, but it's all written sort of ahead of time. It's linear and you're experiencing something that's going to happen a certain way. But in Left 4 Dead, the story of that game, I mean, consider, what is the story? There is no linear story. You don't have cutscenes. You don't have, you know, any special things happening. The story is what's happening to your characters as you travel through the map. You get to this point and you find out that you have to, you know, wait for the helicopter and you call this guy. That is all sort of you experiencing it and the story... And that 
that's kind of what happened with the Battle for Dreaming Bay. It's it's we're in this world versus world thing, and there's no story written ahead. The story is we came across this castle and it was defended, so we went and did this, and then we did that, and then it made this happen, and blah blah blah. So the story is of you personally, what you're doing and what you're making happen, and how it's unique from other people. And I think that's something that these epic experiences like World versus World, but also the dynamic events in Guild Wars 2. The first time you come to things, like somebody in the chat room said, the Shatterer. The first time that I beat the Shatterer. I'm going to be talking about that day forever, kind of a thing. And I think Guild Wars 2 has more of those kinds of moments than other MMOs. Yeah, because in World v. World especially, that's the big allure of it. I mean, people ask me very often, you know, well, Freelancer, you're a big PvPer. Why are you going into World v. World? You know? And we always have that debate, is world v. world really PvP, you know, and all this other stuff. But the fact of the matter is, the allure of it is the fact that it's a giant sandbox. I mean, Bridger, you don't have to attack that tower with your band of merry men, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's nothing driving you to attack that tower except for maybe a few points. But if that tower is held by your arch rival that you have developed over time you know <laughs> and at that point you're developing an experience you know an immersion factor for yourself and your and your group with you to you know to drive you and then it creates memories at that point when you when you you know epically take that tower um and, and then we looked up at the battlements and from from <laughs> them we saw hanging our enemies that's why you the want Shadow me to roll on a u.s server <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> But you know, it's a it's a situation that did Guild Wars that did Arena Net create that little you know rivalry where you were just like you beeline towards that person's keep? No, they created the environment to create that. If you get what I'm saying, and and the MMOs that do that are the ones that are are definitely going to be on top. Guild Wars Two is doing that, and if they can polish it, if they can make it where that experience is really polished, as you know, you brought up Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead is an extremely polished experience. It doesn't throw a bunch of storyline at you. It doesn't tell you what to do. It just says, here you go. We created a polished air, you know, sandbox for you to compete in or to play in. Now you do what you want to do, what, what comes naturally. How are you going to beat the tank? Are you going to go hide in this corner? Are you going to get on top of this thing? There's, there's, yeah. there's a lot of openness in that. Even though it's a linear experience, there's a lot of openness to how you get past each encounter. Absolutely. We just, hey, have, Vega. we just brought Vega in. Welcome, sir. He's going to be a little late today, so he's popping in halfway through. Welcome. <laughs> Vega, how's it going, man? I can't hear you. I can't shake My him. mic was muted. It's going. <laughs> just do a barrel roll. <laughs> Fixes it every time. All right, so there's one last thing I wanted to talk about with regards to this interview, and it's one more quote where he says, quote, it's not that the players can purchase in-game gold, but that they can trade it with other players. So as with EVE Online's Plex system, some players can get microtransactions without paying for them, while others can get in-game gold and or goods without having to earn them in-game. So that got me to thinking. Let's say a uh, freelancer. Let's say uh, you are big spender man. You don't like to have to, to farm gold or whatever. Ignore the fact that you have a guild to farm for you. Let's just pretend that you're Joe Schmo. You've got tons of money. Your uncle died and you got tons of money. And I just got laid off and I've got tons of time. Now, I'm sitting here farming gold, farming gold, farming gold because I want to get a new, uh, I don't know, let's say um, mini pet pack because I'm trying to find the coolest bird that they have. Uh, so, <laughs> so I find, uh, I, I'm, I'm farming and I'm farming and I save up, you know, I don't know, uh, 200 gold and I trade it on the system and essentially, uh, you wind up buying gems and you put them on the system and even though we don't trade directly, indirectly, you get my gold and I get your gems, right, in, in some sense. Now, what just happened? Are you my employer now? <laughs> Did I just pay you in time? <laughs> To, it, 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 like, I, did I just pay you my time so that you could have gold to buy your cool outfit? But then I also got, like, something out of it. It's weird, isn't it? It almost feels like it's an employer-employee relationship at that point. I don't well, know. See, Anonymous. That's, that's how I make a lot of the money I make in MMOs. You know, we got that feedback email. People asking me, you know, man, how, how did you get 700 Ecto in Guild Wars 1? You know, or how did you, you know, get all this or cap out your gold in Vanilla WoW? Uh, which was 232,000 gold, by the way, if you're curious. That's a weird um, number. <laughs> so, you know, they, Is that a they multiple asked of two? That and, and 
you you hit you hit it right on the on the on the nail there, uh, Bridger. That there will always be people that will pay extra money, uh, extraordinary amounts of money, to save themselves time. Now you can call it laziness. You can call it it could be that guy that just has a family and kids, and he just you know doesn't have time. It could be a whole number of people, but there will always be that guy that just doesn't want to farm or doesn't want to grind out something and like in the case that you bought the mini or you sold the mini pet absolutely i, I mean indirectly i may have bought that mini pet but that's 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 part of the way the economy works there's always a supply and demand and you could be sure that there's always a demand for those that do not want to do the work so if you have all that time in the world bridger um great <laughs> but <laughs> But it is people. It is people like you that that have the chance to get extremely rich. Because what you could have been doing in the meantime, mm -hmm. here's a little inside info: money gets you more money. Gold gets you more gold. You can start me with a hundred ecto. I'll have six hundred by the end of the week. Because there's always somebody that doesn't have the time that you have, and you can take. You can call it taking advantage of it or not. But that demand is there. They don't mind paying you an extra two ecto for your uh, for your arm brace, for example, which. Right now is running 24, you know, 24 acronym. They don't mind paying that because they need it right now. They'll pay you for that. So uh, am I employing you? No, I don't think so at all. I just think that's the way the economy works. Uh, you got what you wanted. I got what I wanted. And we both win in the, in the end there. So Vega, you just joining us, we're talking about this uh, this interview with ArenaNet president talking about the microtransaction system. And there, there were a lot of... Well, there was a big threat on Guru that basically pointed out, okay, so the die system forces me to wait a day or I can buy this plant food to, you know, make it grow faster. And so to me, what he, what he basically said was, um, this seems like they could have just given us drops of dye. But instead, they said, well, we could give them drops, but if instead we make them wait a day and then charge them to make it instant, then we can, you know, screw them over or something like that. He made it all very insidious and, and ooh, <laughs> ArenaNet's changing their design to deal with monetary considerations. Watch out. I'm going to blow your mind. All right. Ready? Uh -oh. Everybody? I'm ready. Here I'm ready. it comes. <laughs> Every single game changes its design to deal with money every single one there's only one out there there's only one situation in which that won't be true and that's if the person making the game is independently wealthy and can follow his vision or has backers who are independently wealthy and don't tie any strings to the money that they're giving him but otherwise every single game everywhere is always compromised by the form of monetary reward that you have to get at the end. If you do a publisher relationship, the publisher gets to take control of some things. If you try to fund it, crowdsource it with Kickstarter, that has some certain things that require you to do certain things. It, 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 it's always going to come down to making compromises in order to make it a profitable endeavor. Otherwise, the game doesn't ship and it doesn't come yeah. out and it doesn't happen. So... I think this guy's chasing a pipe dream when he says, I can't believe that it, the monetary changes the thing. <laughs> um, and I pointed out that the fact that you can either pay cash or you can wait time and money. Time is money. Those are two basically similar things, as Freelancer was just talking about. So what they've done there is specifically, outside of the whole monetary thing, They've created scarcity in the die system because if you employ any kind of price onto something, it's going to reduce its, uh, it, it's going to make it more rare. So if it takes time or if it takes money to do something, there will be less of it. So what they've, that basically seems to me they're trying to make dies be more rare than they otherwise would be with, if they were just said, yep, it's free and you get it automatically when it drops. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. You're not crazy. I'm, I'm going to get flamed for saying this, but you said the currencies are time and money, right, Bridger? Yes. I like I like to think it's split by time, money, and intelligence. <laughs> I, I really do. Um, Where can I get me some of that? Can I buy that at the trading post? <laughs> <laughs> I really. I mean, it, it is it is kind of uh, you know uh, it, you have to you have to note this. Not everybody going into auction houses 
uh, knows what they're doing. Not everybody that is listing things for auction. Take Diablo three, for example. All right, who's who's playing that on right here? Vega, are you playing it? Yes, you... yes, I'm playing it. Okay, have Very you seen so. the auction house? Yeah, so. I've seen there, it. <laughs> it, it's, it has no rhyme or reason. No. Nobody has <laughs> any clue what they're listing items for. And that's that. And it's just the intelligence is not there yet. So what you have is without the three components, time, which people have, money, which people are getting, and intelligence, which is lacking, you have a completely broken market system. So that right there is a big, big uh, proponent to having a successful character and making well, that money in the game. I think I think that right now I think Guild Wars 2 could potentially have the same sort of problem that or any MMO could have the same sort of problem that D3 is having right now is the fact that no one knows at the start what things are worth. So yeah, you have every Joe Schmo making up, oh well, this sword's like really good, fifty thousand. Like why fifty thousand? You know. Yeah. So you. At, at it's the start a round of number, game, Vega. Everybody knows round numbers sell better. The old class <laughs> is crazy. Forty-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. <laughs> Like a but, million gold or something ridiculous. Yeah, things are selling for. But the buyout's like two million. But I mean, it's it's because the game is so early, no one knows how to really price things. So obviously the market's going to be crazy. And something similar could happen in, when Guild Wars 2 comes out because... Oh, it definitely you know, will. I mean, that, we I talked mean, about a, that. Guild Wars 2 is a little more clear cut because, um, you know, let's say you're, you're crafting something, you're going to get this. In, in D3, you craft something, but you have all these random properties. So there could be one item that has... 200 different properties to it that are all random every single time and so when that's why there's so much ambiguity when you're trying to do the auction house things in d3 yeah, you don't know what you're gonna get it's like gambling isn't it yeah but it's not like oh well i'm gonna make a shield here are the mats that it costs here's what you're gonna get that's what i sell it for well that's uh, that's actually kind of makes me think that's why it's so important to play in these beta weekends and get a feel for the crafting system. What crafting materials are in demand? Like, play the crafting system yourself a little bit, find I out, okay, that. turns out, that's what I'm saying, because you're looking for that stuff. But okay, so what exactly do all professions need? Well, it turns out, you know, lots of them need copper right at the beginning. So if you go out and you make sure you gather that every step of the yeah. way. That's that's where you would fail and I would win. I didn't um, look at it. I'm giving right, examples. So the <laughs> Tell us, freelancer. I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll help everybody out here. The psychology would, would just like you guessed, would say that everybody's jumping in to get copper, so I should mine a ton of copper and make a profit. But that's exactly why you shouldn't mine a bunch of copper. It, it's a reverse psychology thing. Now, what you have to think of is is from the player's perspective. In, in three days, how many players are going to be level 20 and mining iron instead? You know, and when you start thinking about that, okay, let's say 40% of the market is going to be at that point where they're needing iron at this point. So then you might think, well, maybe I need to start mining iron because that's a little bit more you know, expensive and there's going to be some players that are the net. Well, no, even then you're wrong. What you got to look at is, is the groups of players that are going to be either so far ahead that they cannot find the sources they need to craft items or so far behind that they don't have the money to also it, it it's it's kind of i'll give you an example bridger uh if let's say the a stack of copper we'll say 20 copper is going for five gold okay okay are you with me and everybody's listing it everybody <laughs> everybody's listing it for five gold and there's let's say there's a hundred listings five golds five gold each and then there's a few listings for six gold we'll say the average is five gold now why would you think that i would immediately buy out the entire copper market and list everything at three gold. What kind of common sense would that be if I did that? What do you? How do you think I'm gaining from that? Yeah, no. Really? Kai is like, you're just wait, trolling. Wait, you're trying to wait, convince I, everybody I, else I listening to the show. And then put it for like ten gold. I, I'm telling you, if the average is about five gold, and there's listings for four, five, six, seven, and I buy it all out and I list it for three gold a piece, how am I making a profit? See, that's that's the kind of thing. It, it's I am though. I'm making a huge profit because. While I'm only listing, let's say I bought out a total of 1,400 auctions, or we'll say buy orders, because in Guild Wars 2, you have mm -hmm. orders. You know, you place buy orders, sell orders. I will relist, uh, let's say the average turnover rate is about 600 a day. I will list 400 at three gold a piece, and I will then list the last 200 at eight gold a piece. And when you actually crunch the math at the amount of profit made from the eight gold versus the four gold, I'm actually coming out on top. So two things happen. One, I just made whoever is looking to buy copper, 
they're they're ec- ecstatic. Oh my God, they're three gold apiece. How did this happen? But then for those that are procrastinating, those that wait, those that get lazy, and then they wait at the end of the night to buy it, it's only listed at that point for about eight gold apiece, and that's where we make the profit at. Um, I've done that a lot, and wow, I mean, it's just it's analyzing markets, analyzing how many people you have in each scenario. And, now, and just take it advantage. Day, wouldn't you have to keep prices. buying all the stuff out throughout the day? Because wouldn't people start listing it at three or undercutting well, you to two nine? Well, here's here's the here's the fun part about this, Bridger. All right. Now let's say somebody wants to undercut me because they want to do a quick sell. So guess what? They list theirs at two gold. Guess what I do immediately right after that? I buy it out at two gold a piece immediately as I see people listing to undercut me. And if even if I turn around and sell it at four gold a piece, which is under the average when I ri- originally started guess what? I'm making a profit. And it, it's, it goes even further beyond that. So if I buy out the entire market and set it at this price, at a lower price, that actually helps most people. But people try to undercut me, then I buy out their auctions and list it at the normal average price and therefore make... You're like the guy that uh, puts an extra zero on the price of linen cloth in the auction I, I'm explaining this because we have, we <laughs> Hang have on a, a second. feedback emails that, I... that asked and there you go. I, I mean, have that's, that's one, one more question. Methods. I have one sure. more question. Should I buy Facebook stock? <laughs> <laughs> so Facebook stock are, opened what up. What are the lottery numbers? <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, I'm a big stock trader. You know this, Bridger. And it opened up at like, what, about $30 and then plummeted like within 24 hours. And you know, I was one of those guys that's like, I wonder if I should buy this. You know, well, I started it. It was at 38, and within the end of the week, it went down to 30. Yeah, it start, I know it started high, and then there was all those threads the next day of CNN and, uh, and money, and that just it said it plummeted. So I was like, when I read those, I was like, it's a good thing I didn't do that impulse buy there. So, yes. Yeah. Someone uh, just said to me, freelancer, that you have to become one with the auction house. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not, it, doing all of that is not for everybody, but some people enjoy, you know, learning about it. And, and I had a feedback email. I think Bridger responded to it. You yeah. know, instead of being the elitist jerk that doesn't tell people these things, I, I guess one one episode a week or every other week, Bridger, I'll give a little tidbit like that. All right, you have to excellent. write it down and make a guide. A guide Making money with Freelancer. Let's go to his corner where he's currently diving into a, a pool full of gold coins where's that, where's and spitting them out like water. Where's, <laughs> where's that, that GIF when we need it? All right, um, so... There's one more thing uh, that I wanted to say, and now I can't remember what it was. So it seems like here, let's break down this microtransaction thing once and for all. It's very simple. I kind of came to this epiphany, like it, just trying to figure out the simplest way to talk about this, because it always gets very complicated very fast when people say, oh, well, this is okay, but this isn't. No, here's how it is. The system that they have set up ensures that if you're just playing the game, not grinding for gold, just going on dynamic events, going into dungeons, playing world versus world, doing what you want to do, but, you know, playing smart, not throwing away money, doing the smart things like Freelancer was talking about, and you never, never, you know, just go and buy something outright. Put up a buy order for it, always. Never go and sell something to the highest bidder. Always put up a sell order. Doing those two things alone (laughs) will get you, like, 50% more gold than any than anything else you could possibly do. So if you're just playing smart, you're going to get some excess gold at some point, right? Which you can trade for gems and get something from the real money auction house, from the gem store. So what this means is if you're just playing the game, you're going to get a steady trickle of new things that you might want from the gem store. However, if you want to go faster, you can play pay real cash for it. And that sounds an awful lot on the macro scale, like League of Legends, or Super Monday Night Combat, or any of the other, or Tribes Ascend, any of the other successful free-to-play systems where you get something over time automatically, just by playing the game, not by grinding, just by playing, and then if you want to speed it up, then you can with real cash money. The only question is, are the things you're getting really, like, pay-to-win things? And... Hopefully the answer to that is no. I think in Guild Wars 2 it's definitely no. But that system doesn't sound unfair to me, honestly. Well, I wouldn't I know. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I know in Tribes anyway, it's like 42000 or 100000 to unlock certain things. But you get maybe a couple hundred per game, whereas it costs like three bucks to unlock. So they yeah. definitely make it much, much easier to buy right. it than to uh, earn it. 
that I think was not a good balance. So the balance of that system is important, as you point out. I agree. I, I would, I would, like, I wouldn't compare it to League of Legends because when I think of League of Legends, you know, yeah, you get your your points every match and you have your free heroes every week. Um, but you know, whenever they put out the new hero, he's always whatever nine thousand points and like sixty-three hundred, yeah, six, sixty-three hundred, whatever it is. It, and it's it, you know, it's gonna take a while to get there. So it's almost like you know, just give us a few bucks, like like we were just saying. Um, but Guild Wars Two, all the items that you can buy with money aren't things like a new character or something as fundamental as that. It's like dyes or cosmetic things. It's nothing that it's you. You don't need any of it. It's only purely cosmetic and superficial which is why i don't think people should be all pissed off about these microtransaction things be happy that there's no monthly subscription fee and that this is sort of their way to almost balance that out it's like well we don't have a subscription fee but of course we are a company we want to make money and stay in business so why don't we just do this and try and keep everyone happy i think it's it's the lesser evil of having a subscription fee yep yep that let's say you uh, don't want to pay or can't pay or are morally against paying for these you know microtransaction things clearly a ripoff um, if you don't pay for it uh, but you buy it through the by paying gold you know trading to somebody else you're like I'm gonna get this for free because I should be able to get it for free because I know people who say play League of Legends and and uh, they say it, and they say I will never pay a dime for this because it's free to play and damn it that's how I'm gonna pay it. Of course, I said that too. 100 bucks later. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but for those people, they're paying nothing, but they're trading with other people who did pay something. So other people are basically paying your the equivalent of your subscription fee for you. So thank them. Don't curse them out when they get cool-looking <laughs> mini pets. All right? They're paying your subscription fee. Dang it. <laughs> all right, I think we've gone on long enough about this. Uh, dead horse. I actually actually meant for that to take about ten minutes. <laughs> Damn it! <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it always goes. So I guess we won't have um, the previously planned um, generic show this week since we wound up talking about Guild Wars Two for about forty five minutes. There's one more thing we got to talk about here. There was a blog post last week. Uh, what's in a name? And they talk about uh, how the, uh, this is Arena Net talking about how they basically come up with the names for the various NPCs and characters and this this cool thing down here this rat dog that kind of reminded somebody of mushrooms for some reason and so it became a morello i don't even know how that all goes together i am not an etymologist so let's not even uh try and figure that out but there's one thing i wanted to point out and that's if you do want to have some kind of a uh what's the word uh immersion functional name there a is a lore-based name i'm sorry a lore-based name a lore-based name sorry thank you that's what i was trying to go for you can in fact get one with this nice name generator and i'll put a link to this in the actually there is a link to this in the show notes it's uh it's got a it's got a german and an english version here uh so we've got uh, let's say let's make a char name let's try a char name right and let's do a first and last name and let's pull from latin and let's see what it gives us. As long as the Charles internet works. Latin. Oh, we got Kraz Gorfang and Lug Grimwalt. Okay. <laughs> Sounds pretty oh, no, sure. it's, it's oh, the oh, sound. Oh, <laughs> Here you can choose the sound of the name results. All right, let's try it again. Let's try show suggestion using only English. I wonder if that changes anything. Let's find out. I don't even know. I played around this a little bit. It kind of, it's kind of useful, and maybe it gives you an action. I don't even know how it works. Please remember the current database is small. Okay, I guess that's important to know. Oh, that gives us more. Okay. Okay. So, so this is kind of like how it sounds. So, only English is uh, has the Doom Hammer, the Dragon Skin, Blade Master, the various warband style names, Swift Manhunt, <laughs> <laughs> Scar Hate Monger. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I love the char names. Let's try let's try Silvari. Let's see what happens when we try to get a Silvari name. It's got male and female too, by the way. Let's do a female Silvari and see what comes up. Um, so yeah, this is a cool way to get a sort of lore-friendly name because I guess they took into mind... I believe there was a blog article a while ago that explained how they came up with what the name should sound like for the various uh, races. Is that right? Yeah, yeah they, they, they so. have 
I saw uh, like sounds, so like click, fizz, that kind of thing. They're like sounds. Oh yeah, that's right. Like onomatopoeia type things. No, yeah. not necessarily. Like the but... phonetic alphabet. That's like right. it. Yeah, saw a name is kind of like sound how they look. All right, this doesn't seem to want to go. It says, nope, I don't know Silvari. Come back later. Actually, I, I you think, know what? I think oh, we broke it, it. I think the whole chat room. Um, yeah, I think the site's broken. I can't even get to it now. <laughs> chat room, stop it. <laughs> I've, never, <laughs> I've never done that. This, this is, is like a milestone. Nice things. This is a yeah, milestone. Yeah, chat room ruins it. Go to Google instead. Hey, 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 hey. You guys leave the chat room alone. <laughs> Freelancer sticking up for the chat room after he called all of them stupid. <laughs> you know nothing, Jon Snow. All right. So anyway, you can check that out on your on your free time there, guys. It's a it's a pretty cool little site. So if you're looking for a name thing, that's that's that. So um, you know what? Uh, I I had a whole plan here to try to go and and make this like an after hours show. Like a lot of people say they like the discussions that we have at the end of the show, even when they're not Guild Wars two related. So we were gonna have a uh, a whole uh, I don't know. Let's talk about whatever the chat room wants to talk about. Let's do that. Chat room, you got any questions for the panel of expert Guild Wars two uh, info <laughs> sponges that we have up here? Well, while, while they're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and throw in that plug I was telling you about, Bridger. All right, go ahead. Um, uh, this is a quickie update for all you guild leaders out there. Uh, I wanted to in include everybody um, as much as possible. Uh, if you all remember about a month ago, Frag World uh, <laughs> did a town hall meeting that was incredibly awesome. They got all the guild leaders together, as many as possible, and uh, did a big old meeting about it. They are doing uh, another meeting starting, uh, I believe it's Wednesday coming up on the 30th. Uh, that does start at 8 p.m. Eastern. So if you're a guild leader, or uh, let's say a community leader, uh, or, or any, just you do anything, you're trying to get your name out there and you want to be a part of this, um, I would love for you to show up and attend. It's a huge little event that Frag World put together, um, just trying to pull together the community to talk about things. Um, just as with last time, I'm pretty sure ArenaNet will be listening in. Um, they did last time for sure. And uh, it's, just, it's just a nice, nice way to get everybody get out your concerns, kind of talk about your community, introduce yourselves to other community leaders, and uh, it's definitely something to promote. So just wanted to throw it out there. Awesome, and we'll put a link to that uh, to the info for that date and time and stuff in the show notes. Is that that yeah. work there? Absolutely. Awesome. All right, let's fix this. Tad, bada bing, bada boom. All right, so chat room. Do you have any questions for us? I didn't see. I've been trying to follow it. I didn't see anybody here. Uh, putting any, anything useful in there. Did anybody see anything? <laughs> what is the meaning of life? No, no, 42. <laughs> Bridger, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? I don't know, but I can recite for you <laughs> the great, first three paragraphs the of the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Skill pets, uh, skill points oh, in Wolfie points. World, anything new? Oh, uh, uh, they, they they meant do because we talked about the patch notes two weeks ago where they where we saw a very small listing that said added skill points to world versus world. I don't know how they do that. Well, I mean it's just little objectives you go and do because there's tons of empty space between the keeps and towers and just, stuff. So just just have a trader like randomly chilling over there going, if you can guess the puzzle, you will learn a new thing <laughs> or something. Well, there are like skill points where you don't understand how the guy's not just killed by the mobs because there's like 50 like what was it ash legion fire legion flame, yeah, flame legion flame soldiers legion, like, yeah. standing around and like there's like one like ash legion off to the side but they're like 10 feet apart and then you go next to them and they start attacking you and it's not My fair. immersion <laughs> <sighs> any news Someone on said, traits how are sewer baby how are sewer babies made um, anyone, well, anyone when, when an Asura mommy and an Asura daddy really love each other. <laughs> Clearly they pop out of a portal or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think the siege golems, they're like the, like, See, come on, guys. We're talking about Asura here. They, they have some sort of cloning device. And they, just, they oh, walk. Cloning the, vats, of course. The mightiest of the, sci you know, the scientists, the mightiest of them all, you know, just get together in a council and they decide that I am worthy of being multiplied. And they, <laughs> they, they step through it. Uh, that's got to be how it is. I mean, they have artificial Asura, insemination. But they're, but they're so cocky, everyone would just want to get multiplied. That's true. That's a problem. Maybe that's why they banned yeah. the cloning vats. That's 200 years ago. Well, that's why they have golems <laughs> to say no. You cannot. No. So. The golem is the mighty Judge These Judy that determines no. who. 
New meme, guys, for next they week. They programmed the Siege Golems to be completely... How awesome awful. would that be if they if they said, like, next beta weekend that we could play a Sur and Solari? Can you imagine that? Um... I don't know. I, I want to I got make the impression, Astura, but I don't know if I'd actually play one during the beta. I think they might save it to release. And just That's like, what I got the impression. Yeah. I think from some of the things that they were saying, it sounded like that they weren't going to ever have that available in the beta weekend event. The two uh, most unique races they wanted to save crazy. for release. Breaking but I, I, I don't think I'd even play it because I'd want to save all the PvE stuff for... When the game's actually out, so that I don't have to like play through it again, I can just keep going. That's just me. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I would I'd rather, definitely. I'd rather just play human or something. I mean, my plan is to just. I hope we don't reset. Huh? I hope we don't reset. Like I'm Character level thirty. Wipe? I don't want to re level again. Uh, I know that's that's the thing that's gonna kill me because I know they're gonna make us re. They're gonna wipe the characters in this one because I don't yeah. unless they're gonna allow you to play higher than level thirty. What are you gonna do? <laughs> so, so newbie one has a question. Uh, go ahead and read it out, Bridger, and I'll, I'll answer it. All right, freelancer. <laughs> a murderer is condemned to death. He has to choose between three rooms. The first is full of raging fires. The second is full of assassins with loaded guns. And the third is full of lions that haven't eaten in three years. <laughs> Which room is safest for him? Wow, uh, I got that figured out. The thing about this is we, uh, at Team Legacy, we used to have like little philosophy questions like this just to kind of get a little, uh, kind of break the ice type thing. And we had this one. And I mean, you'd be surprised how many people said, well, I could probably kill the assassins with loaded guns, you know, and stuff like that. But it's, <laughs> it's definitely the lion. Because they, they haven't eaten in three years. They're all dead. That's and I'm like... a Mesmer, so it doesn't matter either way. So. What, okay, what if, what if they're like necromancer lions, like lion gob ghouls that are really hungry? Then what? <laughs> You're just reading Eat way too much into that. Where did this guy come from? Who's Vega? You said the lions are already dead, and I'm saying they're they're zombie lions. What do you? That's true. Vega's interpretation is the only one that makes sense, given the question itself, because the question itself is absurd any other way. Although zombie lions could be like I don't know. I don't think there's a lion race in uh, in that uh, the small world game. But if there was, you could put them with 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 zombie lions. Uh, that's a that's a cool game. Will Wheaton plays it. You should watch it. Anyway, um, yeah. Anything else in the chat that we could talk about before we move on? I think uh, eye drops and the rest of the guys are are itching to play some league for some reason. I don't understand. Except that I did it today as well, and I don't understand. Uh, Diablo Diablo Liger. three versus league. Have you played Diablo three yet, Bridger? No, I'm not playing it. Why? Oh. Because it would cost to one hundred and twenty dollars, and it's one hundred and twenty dollars I can't afford to get one hundred and twenty dollars. Because I would have to buy one for Feyrana and oh, I see, yeah. for Mrs. Bridger. For Mrs. Bridger. Mrs. Bridger, and you have to buy one for the birds as well. Yeah, she wouldn't want to be left out, right? Uh, right? All that clicking. Click, click, so, click, someone, puppy. someone just put League of Legends versus Dota two. Dota two. I guess. Oh, now we're starting flame wars. Oh, I, I feel like League of Legends very long is the little child discussion. compared to Dota 2. League of Legends I mean, is for scrubs and casuals like Rihanna. Oh, man. <laughs> Here come the hate mail. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a game between those two. Do not send me feedback based on that. <laughs> Kai, tell them your email. <laughs> now... Uh, that's that brings up an interesting point because I was listening to another one of my my friends' podcast, the Fat Cast, which stands for Fortress Ameritrash, by the way, not not fat as in big boned. Um, he posed on his podcast. Somebody, one of the listeners, gave him the question because they talk about comics on there sometimes. They said, "Who would win in a fight, Batman or Aquaman?" Batman. <laughs> That's... I don't know. What do you mean? What? It's very Batman. straightforward. Who would win in a fight? Batman Mind or Aquaman? Blown. I'm confused Batman. by the Aquaman. Who is that? You've well, never I heard know... of Aquaman? From Justice League, I know is that. Is that like anywhere... Waterman for normal people? Hey, hey, Kai, Kai's in Europe. Give her a break. I didn't yeah. know they didn't have Aquaman, Aquaman there. Aquaman. Although that just shows that the Europeans have good taste, because no one likes Aquaman. Yeah, Aquaman. <laughs> Aquaman can never be Batman. I'm Googling Aquaman. Of what are Aquaman's his abilities? Aquaman's the king of Atlantis. He has the power to talk to, to basically compel sea life to do what he wants them to do. He can he can <laughs> breathe underwater. He can swim super fast. And he's also super strong when he's on land. But if he stays on land for too long, he gets all dried out and shrivels. 
Not yeah, yeah, that it won, Mage. I think Batman would clearly win. I think yeah, on Batman. land, it's no question. Batman wins. But Batman. what about in water? In water, Batman would have, like, his, Batman bat, bat, his bat submarine. Yeah, his bat submarine. Bat marine. I think I'm a little. I'm a little biased. I have a little like see, Batman shrine over see, here. See, I'm like, worried theater. because I think I think Aquaman would win in the water, but then I remember that Batman has bat shark repellent, so <laughs> 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 he probably has like bat octopus repellent. And somebody else pointed out if Batman has time, he will assassinate every living creature in the battlefield underwater before the actual fight begins. So you know that'll always happen. Now, the ultimate question, which they also pose on that podcast. Batman, I'm sorry, no, Aquaman versus Dr. Doolittle. Aquaman versus Dr. Doolittle. Like, <laughs> as in Eddie like, Murphy? Yeah, Dr. as in Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy, that's Dr. right. Eddie Murphy versus Aquaman. Yes. <laughs> All right, so now actually... I think I have to go with Eddie Murphy. Oku is asking, uh, what do we think about Planet Side 2? Have you guys been following Planet Side 2 at all? Yeah. Look nice. It definitely graphically looks really cool, and some of the explanations that I have seen of how their systems work looks really cool. Um, I'm really tempted to get excited about it, but then I remember that it's Sony, and they will find a way to screw it up. That's just <laughs> so I have to be like, yes, Planet Side Two. Oh, Sony. Oh, Sony. Okay, okay. Don't don't get your hopes up, guys. It's Sony. Don't worry. Well, it is. It is free, so it's worth a shot anyway. It's going to be free to play? That's what it said. I didn't know that. I must have missed Every, the every Everything's going free to play nowadays. I know. You can't All make money hipsters. by charging people for things. God. <laughs> the devs love the League of Legends model. Well, how many boatloads of money do the League of Legends make? Jeez. Yeah. But, when, you make, when you make people have a choice, they end up spending more money. See, so here's the thing, though. Um... I'm actually subscribing to the Planet Side subreddit right now because I want to learn more information about this so that I can be depressed when it actually turns out to be bad. Anyway, um, what I think, uh, this may have been on the Extra Credits podcast. I've been listening to a lot of podcasts recently. And somebody made the point that, uh, and by the way, you can tell this is because I'm not smart because I take all my cool insights from other people. Um, or maybe I am smart. I'm just stupid enough to say that it on air. That makes you smart. Yes. Yes, I should probably stop truncating all of my statements with that. Anyway, <clears throat> the, uh, the point that was made was you have these developers or publishers that see a particular game like League of Legends make boatloads of money or World of Warcraft make boatloads of money and they copy the business model and the genre. But what they don't understand is the thing that makes that game special is the thing that makes that game special. It's not the specific business model. It's not the specific uh, genre. It's not like World of Warcraft was the only MMO that ever existed. I mean, you have the the EverQuest in the past, right? I mean, you have EverQuest, you have uh, all the other Asherons, Call, you have all these other MMOs. World of Warcraft isn't the only one, right? But what World of Warcraft had that none of the others had was polish, and you can't just make polish come out of thin air. You have to have dedicated people that care about what they're doing. That's what League of Legends did. You have polish put into that game. You didn't have it just spring up out of a business model. Business models don't sell games. Games sell games. So you gotta find something that appeals to people, to gamers, and that is what you gotta make. Well, was that? And, and, you, have to, and you have you to ran? include a small, cute race in it. <sighs> <laughs> that might be required. Because we all know that Teemo makes League of Legends. Gnomes yeah! make WoW. No, no, no. Vigor is way Timo cuter makes, than Teemo. Teemo makes League of Legends. I hate Teemo. Friggin' Yordles, man. Teemo is my favorite. I like Rumble oh better than Teemo. You have to have like a 5v5 Yordle team. Come on, me and my freeze team all roll Yordles. It's amazing. Yes, I have Vigor and Tristana and Rumble now, actually. Did I just incite an accidental Bridger rant? Yes, you did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was a, I tripped into it. <laughs> then so, the music so later. kicking off uh, the podcast here, somebody had a good question. I just barely caught it. What do you, uh, what do you expect for the next public beta weekend event? What do you think is going to be the big deal? What's going to happen? Um, that kind of thing. What do you, what is your predictions? <clears throat> I, I think it's still going to be a world v. world. I don't think there's going to be anything different from the last one. 
I think the same content will be available. I'm hoping, I got my fingers crossed that it's going to be more optimized so that in World vs. World we won't have that clipping issue. I think that will make it even more enjoyable. Um, yeah, and... I think the bugs will be fixed and stuff like that, but I think content-wise, it would be silly of them to release more. People end up playing the whole game before it's even out and getting burnt out. And, you know, the whole selling point for Guild Wars 2 on a PvE scale is the content, the story, and if everyone's already done the story in beta, there's nothing exciting to do on release. And, and the well, other... the... Go ahead. Well, the good thing about the beta weekend is everybody's already pre-purchased the game, so it doesn't matter if you're burnt out on it now or not. Yeah, you're... but you lose uh, yeah. all the progress. The, the thing is, you lose all the progress. Like, I, I, I mean... Freelancer's the achievement guy, too. I mean, you like to see all those things ticked off. You want to explore all the things. You want to complete all the achievements. You want to make sure you get all the skill points. You want to make sure that, you you know, when you click on your character, it's got those little, like, medals that fill in. Like, you've, you've won a certain number of uh, PvP or World vs. World matches or other things. And if those get reset every time, it really is frustrating to go back and do those things again. It feels like, I already but did this. But I think what we need to realize is that this isn't the game. This is a beta. You know, right. You're have to do, do you it want? Again anyway. Do you want when, after the beta? Do you want all that stuff to carry over into the, when the game's released? I would even mind though if they the might be changing some we... stuff. I mean, you know, it's a beta. It's not you know a, like a pre-release kind of thing where oh here's your head start so you get to keep everything. It's a beta. They want you to test things. They want you to go back and do things again and again and again and find things that are wrong with it. Yeah, I think that's what us, we need to realize. They wanted us to mesmer crash the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think the big, big thing they're going to need to do is fix the structured PvP. At least to, I mean, just at the very base level, just allow you to roll with other, you know, yeah. teammates or guildmates. Because, um, you know, we talk a lot about World v. World with Team Legacy and stuff, but we have a very hardcore structured PvP group. They could not join the same games together without being, you know, all sorts of screwed up and multiple levels. So that's that for me. For Rena, Matt, you're listening. Just get that one thing fixed. I, I could forgive the clipping issue. I mean, with uh, in World v. World, how you can only see 30 people in front of you, you know, and there might be 70 there. I can forgive that because it's, it's sort of World v. World, a lot of work being done, but... A lot of people are only playing the game for structured PvP, and that's that's just something I think they need to fix immediately. They just need they just need the basic well. functionality. They don't need, like it was kind of it, it was disappointing that they didn't even have that in the last beta. They need to have just the basics in it. The well, same so. for if you're in a party and going to overflow servers. You'd go into a zone with a party that you're wanting to like quest with or whatever, and half of you in an overflow server and half of you in the normal server, and you just have to keep going in and out of this zone to try and group up. Yeah. I think the same for PvP. You should be able to stay with your party. I Hopefully agree. they're going to fix that issue with the queues and everything, because the queues didn't work for any zone. So we had like 100 people in Team Legacy trying to get into the Eternal Battlegrounds, and we're going in and out of that stupid portal forever. And people would crash, and then they try to log back in, and they couldn't log in because it was full, so they'd log in for, like, half an hour. So there's a lot of things that they just have to make actually work, but I don't think they're going to have much new content for us because, like, I almost have level 40 in the last beta weekend, and I don't think they're going to open up, like, you know, the 35 to 45 zones. I don't think so. I, I don't want to because I don't want to be tempted to go and explore those areas because I, I, I do want the stuff when the game comes out to be fresh and new and fun. I don't want to have to feel like I'm slogging through the same thing I already did. That's why I think for the next beta weekend I'm going to stick to Queensdale because I've already done that and maybe I'll play the hell out of it for the betas. But at least that means I'm not going to like learn every single area backwards and forwards. Uh, you know, completely. Like, I've been around the Char starting area and the Norn starting area a little bit, but I haven't really played through them completely, so I'm hoping to keep it that way. Anyway, uh, last one here, and then we're going to go play some League with iDrops, twitch.tv slash I-D-R-O-P-S. Andridanas asks, Some weeks ago, I think it was Freelancer said that offensive guardians were not viable in structured PvP and kind of left it at that. I kind of wondered if here anybody else could elaborate on that point as to why you think that. Also, hi guys. Hi, Adridanus. Hey. Hello. <laughs> well, if you if you remember, I said that they can do they can be offensive, but in World v World, which is what we were talking about at the time, they are far more valuable as a defensive. You know, that's where me and Vega got into that conversation about um, you know the Holy Trinity and stuff. Right now, I mean, nobody else has the defensive abilities of a Guardian in terms of teleporting and and bubbles, etc. So. 
Yeah, you can play an offensive guardian, but if you're well, an offensive think... guardian, you're not helping your your world v world group as much as you were if you were playing defensive. Yeah, he was he was asking about structure PVP. I'm not sure if we have ever mentioned structure. Well, PvP I gotta tell you something. Structure PVP. I don't know if you guys have seen any um, any of the spirit weapon type builds with guardian, but they will tear you up if you let them. Um, there's one thing I believe it's the the hammer. If I'm not mistaken. Every time it hits you, uh, suns you, knocks you down. Um, on top of the the I other love weapons. Those I mean, yeah, I mean those that you. It's not polished yet because we didn't have a lot of guardians. If you remember, we threw out that statistic thing, uh, Bridger, and mm -hmm. like guardians were the least played class. And so I think there's going to be those players out there that just polish it to the extent that what's going to happen is you're going to be used to facing elementalists, you're going to be used to facing mesmers, you're going to be used to facing all of these thieves and these really you know highly played classes. And then there's going to be this guardian that comes up on the horizon with his hammer in his hand. And, and bring me down gonna, the holy fire. He's going to steamroll you, and you're not going to be. You're going to have any any clue why? Because it's that the uh, the impact of it. You know, the fact that not many people will play an offensive guardian. Yeah. Um, I I think for the, for the next beta, what I might try to do um, is actually just play every single class, even if it's just for an hour, and structure PV. Specifically structure PvP, just to kind of see all their skills and what they look like and the things that they do, just to try and get an overview from that. Because, I mean, when, when I was playing, you, you know, you see someone casting something, you kind of get a gist of what it's going to do. Like, it's pretty obvious when the Elementalist is going to rain down hell on you, but some of the other little things aren't as subtle. Um, I mean, aren't as noticeable. So I think that'd be kind of useful, is to run around and figure out all the skills and stuff for the different uh, classes. All right. <clears throat> With that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it is time to leave it at that. This was uh, a pretty good show. Hopefully, hopefully, in the next couple of days, we'll have some information saying that uh, next weekend is our beta weekend event number two. And if that is the case, please remember, everybody, that we will be doing a show the Monday following the beta weekend. Uh, we will also be streaming. I'll be streaming on the Bridger 15 stream. Team Legacy guys are going to be streaming all over the Team Legacy stream. Freelancers are going to be streaming, I'm sure. So if you want to uh, watch that, if you're stuck at work somewhere, that you have access to a computer and an internet connection, and you want to live vicariously through us, you can do that. Team uh, Twitch.tv slash team slash Team Legacy is where you can find mine and everybody else is there. And uh, that's about it. Don't forget to check out that town hall that Freelancer was talking about. Put a uh, we'll put a link in the show notes. So check us out either next Sunday or next Monday, 8 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. For everybody else, I'm Bridger signing off. Have a good night. Good night. Bye. See you guys. Hi, everyone. Edwin said, have a good night, and winter is coming. And I just thought to myself, winter started 21 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. All right. So if anybody is still watching here, uh, check out iDrop's stream for some League of Legends with Team Legacy. I think iDrop's and I are going to be casting. It's going to be a good time. And you can find that at twitch.tv slash I-D-R-O-P-S. And I'll put it again one more time in the chat room. And there we go. So, uh, wow. We, we talked a long time about that article yeah, we, we love promoting eye drops you guys might wonder why we always uh link eye drops you know what makes him so special he's going to be a, a big big caster for guild wars 2 so get to know him now he's a really fun guy i think if you guys watch the stream for 20 minutes not even that you'll realize this is actually pretty cool the production quality is way up there so it's uh it's nice i'm glad to have and him on board. i like he promoting likes. his stream because I'm d just done hosting this whole show, and this way, he gets to host the next one, I just tag <laughs> along.
and you get to just sit there and, and make jokes. I don't jokes have to worry and... about clicking cameras over. I don't have to worry about setting up graphics. I just let him do that. <laughs> I'll just be the voice on the other end of the mic. You finished uh, some nice graphics though for his stream. Who I dropped? You mean? Yeah, he's got like a whole ESPN type fly in. With yeah, everything. exactly. That's what I'm talking he's about. Got, yeah, the production quality is there. That's why it's it's friggin' awesome. I'm glad he's doing that. All right, so without further ado, I'm going to go join him in the team speak. We can get that going. If you guys want to uh, join us, by the way, for uh, for League of Legends, the Team Legacy team speak, we're playing LOL almost all the time. There's other people playing Diablo 3 right now. Other people still playing Guild Wars 1 a little bit every once in a while. I've been playing some... Uh, okay, everybody's yelling at me to get on TS. I'm going to do that right now. I'm cutting down the stream. Check out iDrop's stream, guys. guys. Have a good night.